Muy buenas tardes chicos, soy Traxon y bienvenidos a un nuevo vídeo Vamos a ver todas las novedades del nuevo DLC de Resident 4 Arms Against, Arms Against Tyranny eh, No sé, Armas contra la Tiranía, que es el DLC que se centra en Escandinavia eh, Creo que no había comentado nada en el canal todavía Ya hay una barbaridad de diarios de desarrollo, entonces he dicho Ya que Paradox ha sacado un par de vídeos eh, echando un vistazo a las novedades, ¿por qué no? Vamos a verlos y así nos enteramos un poco porque eh, los diarios de desarrollo son muros y muros de texto, entonces vamos a ver qué tal. Grande Argeo, vuelve al Imperator. <risa> And I'd like to introduce to you some of the upcoming focus trees being released in AAT. We'll start with a look at Norway. Noruega, eh? País interesante, tío. Hello, I'm Carlo, content manager for Hardware Core, and I'm here to talk about Norway's content. Historically, Norway faces many challenges in arms against the city. Ahora han cambiado provincias en Escandinavia, tío. They just gained their independence. They don't have a big military. And they don't have a lot of budget for it. So what they do is disarm as much as possible and hope for the best. Of course, this didn't. Os entiendo que Noruega se desarma para no llamar la atención pasar desapercibido, ¿no? Que claro, eventualmente la Alemania nazi les invade. O sea, históricamente esto no funcionó. Historically, the Germans invaded for access to Narvik. During six months of the year, Narvik was the only place where Germany could ship their iron from Sweden. So this was a very strategic position. It's also a great launching pad for air attack and naval attack against the Northern Sea and disrupt trade with the United Kingdom. Norway was very tempting, and when the German invasion. Claro, pero sabéis lo que me pasa un poco con este DLC, chicos. En plan, un poco lo que pasa con el con el DLU cuatro, tío, que es una región que me llama más bien poco. En plan, Noruega en la Segunda Guerra Mundial como que no ilusiona, ¿no? Claro, o sea, 100% aquí hay que jugar a histórico, ¿no? Porque jugar histórico... ¿Ves? En plan, juega histórico. O sea, haz lo que puedas, exíliate al Reino Unido y ya si eso volverás a tu territorio, en plan. Me ilusiona, ¿no? Claro. Camino comunista. La museo. Has two options. You can you can do the classic Stalinist path, where you ally yourself with the Soviet Union and fight against Finland in the Winter War, or if you prefer, you can embrace Trotsky's policies and get him into government. This way, you can forge Norway's own path through communism with the help of Trotsky. Who was living in Norway? Ah, sí. If you play your cards right, you can join your government and give a boost to communism. Y obviamente vas a meter en el gobierno, ¿no? Los que vivían en Noruega, tío. Vale, pues de momento no sé. El camino comunista es el que parece más divertido, ¿no? Monárquico. No es que ningún país europeo fuera completo sin un sistema monárquico. Noruega tiene un sistema monárquico. Empezó en 1905 con un viejo príncipe de Dinamarca. Tienes que convencer a Haakon VII para tomar el poder y tomar el poder y tomar el poder y tomar el poder y tomar el poder. Even if, as a figure, they can start defending right away. Norway was a very unindustrialized, undeveloped country, so they had no means of making those weapons. Claro, claro, claro. 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 Claro, claro,
a single Landsberg L120. Especial un tanque, me encanta, tío. Without the turret. They equipped the tank with a makeshift armor and a turret that can only be described as a wooden cylinder with a hole for a gun. Ostras. Nothing like this tank. I mean, actually this tank is very close. Uh, but obviously not a shot either. This is an actual tank, by the way. Moving south from the Norwegian fjords, we arrive in Denmark. Vale, pues de Noruega, tío. Yo qué sé. O sea, me llevo un poco que que puede ser un país eso divertido de de jugar, pues de forma histórica, obviamente, no. Quizá lo que más llama es lo al camino comunista, no. Dinamarca, otro que tal baila, ¿no? En plan, Dinam ¿Ese ¿qué vas a hacer con Dinamarca en la Segunda Guerra Mundial? O sea, claramente, o sea, siendo honesto, este DLC, en plan, a mí me ilusiona poco a nivel de, de, te de temática, ¿no? De, de que sea Escandinavia y tal. Luego trae cosas como aparte que creo que van a ser novedades muy chulas para el resto del juego, que he estado mirando un poco y tal. Pero obviamente a lo que vienen a ser los, los países protagonistas obviamente no, no va a motivar mucho a, a mucha gente, ¿no? Es más la gracia de decir, eh, venga, pues tienen algo especial ahora todos estos países y pueden jugar eh, de maneras distintas y hacer algo en la segunda guerra mundial y tal, pero obviamente no son los protagonistas de esta era ni mucho menos. No es eh, Dinamarca eh, en la época del EU4 o Suecia en la época, bueno, Suecia en la época del EU4 también es muy tocho, del Victoria, ¿no? Pero bueno. O sea, lo que sí que es interesante, obviamente, sobre todo Finlandia, por ejemplo, ¿no? Finlandia sí que fue país como clave, obviamente eh, Suecia y Noruega también tuvieron sus participaciones y tal, pero Finlandia, por ejemplo, el tema de la guerra de invierno, pues la guerra de continuación, pues estaba ahí, ¿no? Y eso es lo que vas a continuar haciendo cuando vas a ir por el camino histórico, hasta que Alemania te invade. Entonces tienes la opción de either resistir them or join forces with them, but you're not going to be any kind of subject. You're actually going to keep your current government and you will start resisting your overlord through different focuses that will create a resistance movement. You can also align with foreign powers. To Te dejaría Alemania mantener tu gobierno siendo Dinamarca, tío? No sé. Eh? Construct civilian factories faster and construct infrastructure and railways faster and speeding up your research. But if you choose to swing the other way and enhance your military capabilities, that'll help you build military factories faster. It'll help with mobilization and training new divisions. So it's a balancing act between building up your welfare state or funding your military. O sea, va a tener, este país parece ser un, un balance de poder, ¿no? Como tenían los, los de Italia, Etiopía y tal. Efectivamente, hmm. balance of power, ¿no? Porque algunos de ellos van a balance of power hacia tu estado de salud y otros van a empujarlo hacia militar capabilidades. La declaración de neutralidad espiritual será crucial for playing historical Denmark. Becoming a subject will unlock the occupation branch for Denmark. A ver, al menos parece el tema de jugar como una Dinamarca vasalla parece algo distinto al menos, ¿sabéis? Supongo que será un poco el rollo de las colonias del Reino Unido también, pero al menos esto sobre el papel, jolín, suena algo distinto, ¿no? Porque no es lo típico ya de, venga, eh, sí, eh, camino histórico, democrático, comunista, tal. We just we we just gonna cut that part from the content. It's all right. It's fine. It's Denmark. You have the ability to start rearming Denmark once again, to be able to oppose any foes that come at you, like Germany coming with one of these bad boys. Those damn Germans. What you have to do is to unify your nation <laughs> and prepare the civilian and military aspect of your society for the oncoming enemy. 
what you also can do is seek strength in numbers. You can seek out allies, or you can also set off one of your territories for a guarantee from a much more powerful nation. Puedes vender un territorio. The fascist branches are all focused on reconquering lost land and reestablishing old empires. The monarchists will be able to form the calmer union. La unión de calma. While the fascist branch will seek to restore the old. El imperio del mar del norte, eh? CK3 Vibes de como era Canuto el Grande, ¿no? North sea Empire. Bueno, why But not, no? Ya, ya que nos ponemos. To create the Baltic Sea Dominion. If you want to go communist, you better use the election system that's implemented into Denmark. From Denmark to features. Bueno, obviamente no nos dan mucho detalle de cada país porque, como digo, probablemente cada país tiene su, su diario de desarrollo de 15 páginas. Pero bueno, ya veremos si lo vemos o no. Fuerzas especiales. Hostia, tienen sus propias doctrinas ahora las fuerzas especiales. However, within the trees, you'll see that there's a big difference. With these trees that allow you to customize your special forces, we have some things that you've never. Qué guay esto. Esto ya está chulo, tío. And support companies and provide some effects that were previously impossible with employees. These unlock some very special types of gameplay that will allow you to pull some tricks on your friends and also possibly pull off a special operation. Each branch has its own do doctrine tree. As you progress down the tree, you'll have mutually exclusive choices to choose from, as well as some standard flaws. These will generally always increase the number you can have within your nation, but also provide stats, bonuses, and much more. With the new customizable trees, Ojo, si vas un... Igual te puedes hacer ahí un ejército full... Full paracaidistas, tío. Están como muy limitados, ¿no? O, tío, jugando con Noruega full montañeros, ¿no? Que es un país como muy de montaña y de bosque y tal. Each branch is paid for with a separate type of XP. Mountaineers are paid with army XP. Ah, sí. Troopers with air. And Marines with navy. Bueno, tienes más puntos en los que gasta la experiencia, ¿no? Your special forces can be vastly different from another country. This means it's even more important than ever that your special forces match up to the country strategy that you're playing. Presets equipamiento. Since the inception of the equipment designers, players have been requesting that we add presets that they can choose when they don't know what to design. In this update, we'll be providing that. Presets will provide you with historical templates similar to those used previously by the auto designer. But now. Vale, gracias, tío. Esto me anima bastante a jugar al juego, eh, tío. O sea, quiero tener que pensar lo mínimo posible estas cosas, por Dios. You can choose what you want. They come with friendly names and pictures, so you can quickly identify your favorite tank. So if you're looking for a Sherman or a Tiger, then you can find it. All of these presets are defined in script, and so they are 100% moddable, and you can add as many as you want. La economía. Ah, es verdad que ahí... Hay... made some changes to the economy. Ya puedes hacer hay un mercado y tal, ¿no? You could end up with zero consumers. This was a problem because you could get to the point where effects and focuses would give you zero effect because you'd already reached zero consumer goods. We've taken measures within this patch to address this. Consumer goods no longer works as it previously did in the calculation. It now has two values. We have a base value and we have a factor. The base value determines the point of which we start from when we calculate our consumer goods. The factor then modifies that value in a multi multiplicative way, which means as you increase your amount of factors applied to it, the result is actually less. This means that you will never truly reach zero consumer factories and you'll just get to very, very small numbers. Bueno, está bien eso, ¿no? Problema ahí que existía. There are two main changes coming to the divisional structure that you need to be aware of. The first one is that the default number of battalions allowed in a single brigade, that is the vertical line within a division template, has been reduced to four. Ah, five. sí. You can unlock your fifth one by investing into your doctrines. Ah, por doctrinas. Each doctrine line has a different doctrine unlock, which will then unlock that final position. 
The second change in division structure is that we've done another review of combat whips. In this general case, we've so to kind of no step back no? from what they were before. And also this has resulted in a much flatter curve when it comes to efficiency over combat whips. This means that overall the combat whip matters less and also larger divisions will not fit quite as well as before. Thanks for watching. Que esto es lo típico que hacen para que no vayas con una mega división aplastando a todo el mundo por ahí, ¿no? Entiendo. Ah, no han contado lo del mercado y tal, pero bueno, lo estuvimos viendo antes del parón. No han dicho nada de Finlandia, ¿no? Argeo, que la cámara está al otro lado. And from the relative safety and comfort of the one and only pet album bus, I'd like to introduce to you the sweet ah, mira, country content and a look at the joint. No iban a chetarlo, ¿no? No iban a chetar Suecia. Sweet. Historically, Sweden actually ties back to the First World War, where they got embargoed by the Brits and well, the entire Entente because they were fighting with Germany. The Ducks kind of model the game that if Sweden comes under like, a certain stability, people can be easy about it. So it's, it's kind of a balancing act, trying to figure out how to navigate, when to rearm, but also you getting rid of your welfare state, so people can be a bit more angry, and you gotta make sure that you don't get those messes right. O sea, tienes que lidiar entre el ejército, o sea, invertir en el ejército, o sea, mandar recursos a la sociedad o al ejército, ¿no? Eventually, you're gonna enter the war trying to either say Norway or Denmark, which probably by that point will fall out of control. But yeah, Sweden is kind of unique. Puedes intentar salvar a Dinamarca. Tremenda fumada, eh. Countries it actually has one. It also has like a solid arms industry, so there's a bit more economics to play with compared to the other countries which either just imported everything or didn't have much in terms of in-house domestic military. So you can actually build a fairly big navy and well, you can build the whole plant in the United States, but you probably can't build all of the stuff. Because you can have a limitation of space, you can be very specific. Okay, Suecia looks nice, dude. It's a pretty big military industry, both horse, obviously, but it also has one of the biggest dockyards in the world at the moment. But it also has a bunch of smaller weapons manufacturers. It formed Saab during the Second World War in the, in the middle of it. Uh, so there's a lot of chance or to interplay with the new military industrial organizations that we're also launching. The focus tree is gonna play into those military industrial organizations that you can upgrade them as you progress through the tree and invest into your MIOs. In, in the same way, you can be that neutral arms dealer if you want to, since if you play your cards right and you stay out of everyone business, you do not actually need to go into the war if you don't want to, or you want to. Bueno, está chulo, tío. Sobre todo, yo también lo diría porque... <risa> ¿Qué? Que lo tenía en lista la parte comunista, ¿o qué? Que con las asociaciones al juego base de todo el tema de especializar tus industrias, las fuerzas especiales y tal, no se pinta chulo, tío. De desnovias no irá no irá para dos a chetar Suecia no no creo tomar tu pelea contra la Unión Soviética y marcha sobre Moscú As the communists, you either team up with the Germans against Stalin, or you team up with the Allies uh, against Germany, depending on who your leader is. Uh, they were kind of split in the middle ideologically. What makes this run a bit more unique is that you're more heavily linked to the Wallenstein, even more than the Social Democrats. So you're turning your consumer good into more of a, a useful thing than they usually are. 
cambios a los recursos. Vale, esto está muy chulo, tío. Los, los países escandinavos tienen árboles de focos compartidos. Que si tú haces un foco, por ejemplo, siendo Suecia, se le da un modificador positivo al resto de países escandinavos. Un poco... Está gracioso, tío. Está gracioso. Y es, y es como algo único, tío. Que eso mola también. En Hearts of Army, vamos a tener el tema de las minor naciones que necesitan anexar a todos los otros minor around. Y si jugamos con amigos, significa que nadie puede jugar a Estonia, por ejemplo. This is why we introduced a joint focus suite that would allow you and your friends to play cooperatively working towards a single focus suite. This joint focus suite has the ability to be completed by several of the nations of these three new unique factions. So if one country completes one... Tiene sí, tres that. facciones. In the case of this expansion we have the Nordic Council, the Union of Scandinavian Socialist Republics. Ah, vale. Que es por ideologías de los escandinavos, vale. That you can form and fight together. These three have extra caps on focus attached to their branches, which would allow them to specialize even more. Moderates will have the ability to change the background of the title of focus to whatever they want. And we've added a new system for switching uh, focus pictures dynamically, depending on condition. That's it for now. Thanks for watching. Next up, we'll be taking a look at the Finnish focus tree, along with one of the major expansion features, the international markets. Until then, stay tuned on social media. Pues ya lo veremos, tío. Lo, de la, lo del mercado internacional, las industrias especializadas y tal, pintan muy chulo. Aunque creo que aún no han revelado todo. De hecho, el diario de desarrollo de esta tarde tiene que ver con lo de las doctrinas de, de las frutas especiales. Que lo hemos visto en el vídeo de antes. Eh, que no sé si haré un vídeo, chicos. Ya veré igual mañana. Porque creo que esta semana no hay más novedades de nada. Igual del Stellaris. Eh, que anunciaron algo este vez, tengo que mirarlo también. Pero bueno, chicos, así no. Obviamente, este vídeo no es tan profundo como hacer un vídeo de cada cosa, pero nos da un poco una idea general del DLC, que creo que es un poco lo que era el plan. Así que, el plan, ojito. <risa> así que bueno, supongo que saldrá pronto este DLC también, o a principios de septiembre. En septiembre del año pasado sacaron un montón de DLCs. Y no, ve, no me parecería loco que haya un DLC pequeñito del Stellaris. El del BPA3, el del Hoy 4 y algo del EU4 para septiembre. Y de hecho, el del CK3 también. O sea que se viene septiembre movidito, chicos. Para averiar. <risa> Venga, nos vemos en el próximo vídeo, chicos. Chao, 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 chao.